Okay, so everyone knows I love my Nexus Pro. But I may have a new love here. What's up, everyone? Reaver here, and today, yes, we are looking at this, the Dart Zone Max Striker. Now, since the pictures of this thing got released, I have been looking forward to getting my hands on it for quite some time. Um, the Max Striker is, I guess you could say, a new series that Dart Zone is putting out. It is a Target exclusive line, and basically the target equivalent of a Nexus Pro. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've played with a Nexus Pro, you can see a lot of similarities. Uh, this is a spring-powered dart blaster that fires both full-length and half-length darts natively out of the box at 125 feet per second, or FPS. The Nexus Pro, originally, out of the box, could natively shoot full-length and half-length darts at a rate of, I think it was, 125 FPS. So, what's different with this? Obviously, cosmetically, it looks different. Um, internally, I'm not 100% sure. We're going to check that out when we open this up later and possibly see what I have in Nexus parts that could work with this wonderful beauty uh, but going over the aesthetics of it uh, I gotta say right off the bat I love that it has a shotgun style grip on it and not the angled foregrip uh, like on the Nexus while it does serve me quite well in battle I always prefer these type of primes I don't know why it's just my personal preference nothing against anyone who likes the other version that's just me. So, what do you get when you get a Max Striker? Well, first and foremost, you get the same thing for the... Well, you get the blaster at the same price as a Nexus Pro. That is a Walmart exclusive for $50. This is a Target exclusive for $50. You get with it a stock, the short dart adapter... One 12 dart capacity half length magazine and one 12 dart capacity full length magazine. Uh, it comes with a shotgun grip on here and it does come with a giant muzzle brake. So if you want to run a short rifle, it's very possible for it. Um, I did do a little bit of testing, obviously, before all this. Um, in regards to the stock, this is an M4 style buffer tube. It does take the aftermarket stock that I have on my Nexus. I did check that before. And to show, it does also use the Nexus stock very easily, which means it will also take the Dart Zone 1.1 or Dart Zone Mark 1 stock as well. So that is a very nice compatibility thing right off the bat. Um, as far as the muzzle brake goes, I did try and put this on my Nexus, and with the way the worker barrel I have on there is, this unfortunately will not work with it. So, if you have any extended barrels on it, you may have to tweak some things if you want to use this particular muzzle brake. If not, we'll figure it out at some point, but right now, a as far as I can tell, a stock configuration is probably going to be your best way of using this unless you crack it open or hollow out the end of it. But just to see what else will work, this is one of my barrels that I had made for my Nexus, and it does work. So there is that. So... Going over the aesthetics of the blaster, I mean, I love it. It's, you can tell it's a Target exclusive because it is really, really in Target colors. Uh, the main body is all red. 
All the accessories are gray, and it is a much lighter gray than what comes on the Dart Zone. Or not Dart Zone, uh, the Nexus Pro, sorry. Because this is what you get with that. And you can tell it is obviously much, much gr lighter gray. Uh, the grips on it are also different as well. Uh, for the Max Striker, only the lower portion of the actual uh, grip is what actually comes off. Where on the Nexus, it's actually the whole piece, even though right here is actually a connection point to the main body itself. You do have a full Picatinny rail on top here. No brakes on it because it's all what it's all uh, unibody, and you don't have the weird dip like on the Nexus. You also do have a bit of an angular cut on the front here, which actually kind of mimics the what the Dart Zone Mark One and One Point One a bit as well. Uh, not exactly, but a good homage to it. Now, as far as your additional optics that come with this, you do get these two like faux iron sights that come on the blast that come with the blaster. I'm going to say this right now: I am not a fan of them whatsoever, um, for a few reasons. One, with the redesigned stock, which I do have to say I really like this one. Uh, you do have a bit of a cheek riser built into it. It is not adjustable. It is all unibody. It's one piece, so it doesn't go anywhere. However, this is also where your spare O-rings are if you're ever looking for those. But because it does have the cheek riser, I'm tending to notice my head, obviously, rests a little higher. So it doesn't line up directly with these iron sights. It does work with the scope, though, or faux scope, I should say. So I'm able to use that very well, but if I didn't have the scope on it, I had to rely on the iron sights, it really wouldn't be something I'd be very comfortable with. Um, also, this particular design, I'm honestly not a fan of. Uh, the Nexus Pro front sight obviously does work on this fine. Uh, the rear windage sight, however, does not. That sight is honestly strictly for the Nexus and really nothing else, which is honestly a little bit of a bummer. I would have liked to have been able to actually just throw it on the back of this if I if I decided to go with that aesthetic or not. But either way, uh, the scope there, it's a, it's a total faux scope. If you look down it, you can see the... Uh, crosshair, I'll try and see if I can get it on camera. If not, I'll showcase it more when we go to the workbench. But there are no lenses in it whatsoever. It's completely hollow with literally just a plastic crosshair shoved towards the front of it. Uh, the one thing that I was really looking forward to in regards to this was the shotgun grip. And I gotta say, 99% I am not disappointed. It's honestly perfect for my hand it actually fits right between all four of my fingers it's very nice it's actually pretty comfortable as well my only thing is though because it fits so perfectly like here my thumb kind of wants to wrap around the front and when it does that it keeps catching right here which isn't great i can't slide my hand back just a slight bit which does work totally fine and i've fired off a couple dozen rounds like this and Again, it's fine. The only issue is you have to be careful because if you slide your hand back too far and your finger gets back here, it will get caught there. So if anyone is going to redesign this particular piece just a little bigger, that would be awesome. But yeah, that's really the aesthetics of it. Uh, functionality, it does have a safety switch just like on the Nexus and the Pro line. I'm going to see when we go to the workbench if I can't tweak it. And, yeah, that's really about it for the aesthetics of it. So, let's go to the workbench and see what the insides actually hold. Okay, so real quick, before we actually get into the blaster, I actually did want to talk about the darts for a second. Because the new Max darts, Max Striker darts, Max Pro darts, whatever the hell they're going to be called, I honestly, I forgot. 
Uh, just to show the evolution of how Dark Zone has, I don't want to say revolutionized, but really kind of upped the game of the half dart. Now, huge props, obviously, to Worker for really making the first, I think, the first real mainstream set of them. But, I mean, like, you have Silly Tip darts, the ACC darts, Jet Cena darts, you know. They're not the only one in the game. Uh, historically, I'm not sure which came first, the chicken or the egg, but this is where we're at now. So we started off with the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1 and 1.1, 1 .1, which came with the, bam the ever so lovingly called bamboo dart. These green foam with orange tips that had these little ridges, uh, more obviously on the full length of darts. But yeah, this was the first one that Dart Zone put out. And I mean, these shot like champs, which was amazing. So we had those wonderful things. Then they upped the game by making the very accessible and commercial ready Adventure Force Pro half length darts, which all they did was they took the head off of the bamboo darts and then just gave it a gray foam, solid gray foam body. Uh, or black foam, depending on the lighting. But yeah, these are the Adventure Force Pro Darts that you can find at Walmart for a hundred for ten bucks, which is I think it translates to ten, ten, ten cents a dart, which is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, these were like the most recent game changer, and I gotta say these are still really solid darts. Now you have these, which are the max starts or the max pro or the target version the ones that come with this thing you can see right off the bat the head design has been changed it's almost a hybrid of the waffle tip and the adventure force dart or the bamboo dart so it's not a completely you know squishy headed dart like a waffle tip it's got the triangle cutouts obviously much different than the uh, ones that were in the orange tips, but also these are gray tipped with red foam bodies, which red foam is a lot easier to find than this or that. But yeah, and construction of the dart is really solid. Like the tips are really well on. And I got to say, these darts are really, really nice. These you can find at the, well, okay. These darts you can find either with, obviously, the Max Striker. Also, the full, much like the full-length Adventure Force darts, the full-length uh, Max darts are basically the short darts just longer. Uh, but yet, yeah, these you can find at Target. They are 150 darts for $15. Now, a couple people said online when they first announced that of uh, Oh my God, why are they so much more expensive? I'm just going to get Adventure Force Pro Darts. This is the same freaking cost. It's 150 darts for $15 as opposed to 100 darts for $10. It's still 10 cents a dart. It's really going to come down to your color you know, your color choice, really? And do you want 100 darts or do you want 150 darts? Honestly, that's it. So now that I have talked about the wonderful new darts, I am going to go get a little drink and then we are going to open up the striker. Oh, yes. I hate this. It is revolting. More? Please. Okay, so here we are at the workbench. Um, I obviously have not opened this up yet because I did want to go over a few things that I did kind of over, not really so much overlook or not, but um, one thing I did want to point out is with the uh, stock attachment point, which is the M4 style buffer tube, you have an end cap here, which is the exact same end cap as on the Nexus Pro, which means... Oh, it's right here. Uh, this is the 175 
FPS tuning cap from out of darts when I ordered my one for the Nexus Pro. I ordered an extra one just to be on the safe side. And yes, yes, it works. So right there, I've already upped the what would be standard by almost like 50 FPS. So there's that. Uh, you'll also notice a few other things that I have out here. Uh, this barrel is the one that came out of the Nexus, and I want to double check to make sure it is the actual same barrel and measuring it off according to my cutting mat here. It is approximately a six inch aluminum barrel. I have these barrels, which came to me via Foamdemic, which actually one was in my Nexus Pro for a hot minute before I got the worker kit. So I have all the pieces for that that I'm going to see, will these be able to work in here? And if so, how well? So I'm going to try and brass barrel this thing as well, uh, besides fixing that thing. So, But I had heard a few things about what was under the shotgun grip, and I figured we'll just take a quick look at that on camera before I take a hot second to actually open this thing up so there we go and yes so underneath the shotgun grip you actually do have a bit of picatinny rail so if you wanted to actually use a foregrip like on that comes with the Nexus or an angled foregrip or whatnot, you could actually just do this by removing the shotgun grip and not have to worry about a 3D printed uh, piece to put on there. I mean, obviously the pump grip could be a, the grip itself could be 3D printed, but you don't have to worry about making this a 3D printed piece. So, all right. So now that that's out of the way, give me a hot minute. I'm going to open this up and then we'll take a look at the inside of this okay so i've removed all the screws and much like the nexus this has two tabs on the plunger tube that you need to pop in order to actually open it and i gotta say these were actually way easier to pop than on the nexus which <laughs> already win uh so i do have to say though it doesn't lay as flat as the other one uh, now you will notice right off of the bat uh, where it says Max here, uh, yes, there is a shroud for the plunger tube that is actually where it says Max there. So, uh, okay, so yeah, we're basically looking at the internals of a Nexus Pro. The plunger system looks basically the same. The triggers actually match up almost perfectly. Uh, it, there is a little bit extra here. Uh, you know what? I actually do want to pop mine out. Now pop mine out and see if I can or if I wanted to swap my Nexus Pro trigger in here since it's already painted red if it will actually go and it looks like for the safety it's just the one tiny little notch here which i will just carve out with a utility knife no i cannot use okay so first thing is the triggers are not swappable because the next the Nexus only has the two connection points on it, whereas this one has three points. It has this little extra piece right back here. So that unfortunately means that this trigger is not going to be compatible. So, oh well. One mark against it, not the end of the world. So, I am going to just pop these off so we can actually get to the internals. 
And I have a feeling will the Bryce Okay, the Bryce will sleep through it. So might oh uh oh, oh we might be able to brass this bad boy. We might be able to brass it. Which if we are, I'm going to be very, very happy. Because that basically means I will have a I guess you could say a sleeper striker. <laughs> uh so So there's that. And there's that. So the barrel that comes with this, yes, is basically the oh actually it's a little longer than the uh Nexus Pro the Nexus Pro's uh inner barrel. This is actually the Nexus Pro is actually just shy of six inches, whereas the Max Strikers inner barrel is actually just over six inches. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, if I wanted to, I could actually utilize. I'd have to like really tape it in, but natively, the a worker barrel will actually work with the stock piece in the nexus the only problem is though oh no it would work nope no it won't uh it works to a point uh the front barrel piece it has a very very small ridge there that actually will not let the worker barrel go through it like the brass so you'd have to definitely modify the front of this in order to actually fit in a worker barrel. And for those wondering, this is a 10 inch one, I think from a retaliator, I retaliator kit I got from, uh, uh, what was it? I think at a strike. So. Does, no, that would not work. So that's got to go all the way forward. This, this seat's in there. And this seat's in here. Where's that? It's a sh ah, damn. Okay, so when I got this set from uh, Foam Demic regarding the breast barrel, I did receive this front end, which is a replacement for the original Nexus front end. Cool thing, this actually slots into the back of here, which is awesome, which means the brass would actually have something to actually, you know, seat in on this end. Was this the tight one? Yeah. So, I mean, you would have a perfect hold for the brass, which is wonderful. However, because of how this sits in here, if you set it in because of that raised lip right there the priming the prime handle does not go all the way forward so you would be able to get a full prime on it uh, i would probably have to just chop off like half an inch on this to fit it in so and i have two so i think honestly that's what i'm going to do so give me one second i will be back in a moment Okay, so with my Dremel tool, I just marked a line where it kind of protruded out from the end and just hacked the piece off there. Uh, I actually did, I'm actually reaching out to uh, Jade over at Foam Demic just to give her the heads up on this in case, you know, slight modification and this will work for a striker. Uh, yeah, then the, with that, it just fits perfectly right in there, so... And now, just to make sure this piece will actually fit, I hope, I hope, I hope. Oh, okay. Oh, you cheeky bastards. Did you actually... Do I have my piece? No. Oh, you cheeky bastards.
Oh, wait, never mind. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah. So, that piece fits in there fine. Uh, we got the brass. In. Oh, wait, no. Nope. Yeah, no, I am an idiot. Okay, so, downside is they reversed the holes on the pieces. So, originally on the Nexus, it was big hole in front, little hole in back. On this one, it is little hole in front, big hole in back. Damn it. Okay, so yeah, there is going to be a decent amount of... Shoot. So, actually, the hole is fairly large enough. I might be able to just drill that out to fit this in. And if that's the case, then I'm definitely using this piece for the brass barreling. And, yeah. Oh, I'm also going to remove this lock just because I did on the, uh, on the, uh, I did on the Nexus because it was annoying. I don't like trigger locks. I don't like priming locks. So, truthfully, I really detest priming locks. So that is coming out. Got to magnetize one since I can't see it. And these will go in the screw bin. So yeah, the inner workings of the Dart Zone Striker. And oh, for those curious, yes, it does have the little dark guide. It was just hiding. So, yeah. I'm going to fiddle around with this a little bit to see if I can get it to fit right. Hopefully, I will be able to. And if I can, this is going to be really cool. Uh, but if not, I am sure somebody will have this either retrofitted or fixed up or altered or whatever. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to reach out to uh, Jane over at Foamdemic and uh, just let her know my findings in case she hasn't gotten a uh, striker yet or just a little friendly R&D that I did for her, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, I'm going to close this up after I do my little bit of tinkering and then I will tell you what I was able to actually do and give you my final thoughts on this. Not first without doing a firing demonstration, of course, though, but, you know, all in all the same. So, see you in a moment. Okay, so, obviously, you can tell this is not closed up. However, I was able to finally get the original piece to fit in, and I believe it should work. Hopefully, God willing. They have to make a small modification to that bottom one so it does it snaps down a little better yeah because i think that hole's just slightly off but i was able to there was enough meat on the bone so to speak to actually widen that hole just enough so i'm going to do the bottom one and actually i did speak okay more texted uh jid over at foamdemic and she's actually already told me they're already working on a kit for this thing. So, <laughs> awesome. Uh, obviously, the kit's not live at the moment. Otherwise, I would just be ordering it saying, screw it, I'll just wait and get that. But I also kind of want to use this at Epoch. So, I'm doing my best to do the retrofit that I can. And eventually, we'll order the proper uh, parts from Foamdemic once they're actually available. So, yeah. Kudos on being already on top of that. Uh, I mean, I got to say, I got honestly, I have nothing but love for Foamdemic. Jane really does care about her customers and just everyone over there. They they not only make quality stuff, but yeah, they're they're really awesome. So, you know, again, huge shout out to Foamdemic. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit of trimming on this piece and it should be able to sit in flush and i'll be able to then get this all buttoned up i'm thinking since i'm gonna put the 175 cap on the back here 
I'm thinking I'm just going to go with the 12 inch brass barrel. I'm not going to bother with the 10 inch at the moment and we'll just see how well it works out and hopefully we'll get too much fish tailing from this thing. Uh, cause I really only have the one scar barrel that's on my Nexus. And so, but yeah, either way, we'll see what's going on. So not for Emily, let me get back to it. Okay. So I'm just an idiot. Uh, I really am. I did not even realize that the original piece, the Nexus piece actually sat back. Not only was the screw ports reversed. This actually has a longer barrel, so where it's actually resting right here is right at the tip of where this is. So that does not fit actually at all. So what I have done is I have literally probably used half a roll of Teflon tape to wrap this around. Then after a while, I decided, screw it, I'm going to use electrical tape to really kind of fit it in. It's a very snug fit. I mean, that's that's in there and then just teflon tape around it so that's the jank that i am going with right now so yeah that's 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 gonna be fun so cool beans now i'm really gonna close this up and get this all uh situated so yeah 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 Okay, so after much toil and tribulation, I got my striker put back together, and I'm going to be calling it, at least for the time being, my sleeper striker, because I'm going to bring this to APOC as long as it fires properly, but yeah, I'm not going to have time to paint this before APOC, so it's going to stay stock colored. However, it does have the... 175 FPS cap from Out of Darts in it, and part of a Foam Demix brass barrel kit in here, which you really can't see through this, so hopefully everything will go fine. Uh, I have the short dart adapter already in here. I have my red talon with about 10 of the Max Striker darts in here. And I have my dart catcher set up at the end. I'm just going to reposition the camera just so you can see me actually firing a little better. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. And I will set up my... Uh, Saturnus to get some readings out of this thing. Uh, that will be done off camera and I'm going to edit in the numbers just because it's going to be a real pain to set everything up to try and capture it like this. But I'll, I'll put up the average of like 10 shots like here or something. So enjoy! That was 10 shots, and now that I took the, the lock out, I can actually deprime it properly. So, yeah, so my final thoughts on this thing. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> uh, that's to say without a shadow of a doubt. Um, the little design tweaks on the body I do like over the Nexus Pro. I like the fact that the top rail is now one straight piece not having to print a 3d printed part or get a pretty pricey uh aluminum piece to actually give you a level tactical rail on top right off the bot back is really nice um my preference has always been for shotgun grips over angled foregrips or uh front grips so i really do like this uh, even with the out of darts cap on here, this is still really easy to prime. I don't feel like anything is going to snap on me at the moment. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, as long as I have 
the brass in here, and this is actually the 10-inch barrel, not the 12-inch. Uh, but, I mean, I'll be able to get use out of the suppressor, so that's really nice. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be needing a scar barrel for this just yet. More likely than not, I will. But, over and all, yeah, this was a very, very happy buy, and I am definitely getting a second one. Uh, mainly because I forgot to cancel an order, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with the striker. Uh, if you had a Butter, Aziz. Get another one, you moron. I think I have one in the truck. Yeah, so if you really bring it down to brass tacks, what's better, the Nexus Pro or the Max Striker? It's really honestly going to come down to your preference. Uh, do you like the design of the Nexus Pro better, or do you like the design of the Max Striker better? Uh, honestly, really, that's what it is. Internally, they're just about on par. I mean, technically, they are basically the same internals. They just made enough tweaks to this thing so that you can't inter-swap Nexus Pro kits directly with Max Striker kits. But, I mean, for the most part, if you're just going to brass it, you're just going to brass it, and you don't need a kit for that. Um, I just so happen to have a couple of parts that work, and that's all. But, yeah, it's really going to come down to that. Which one do you like more personally? I do really like the design of the Max Striker and the feel of it over the Nexus. And don't worry, baby. I, I still love you. I swear. I swear, baby. I still love you. Um, yeah, I'm not getting rid of that thing like anytime soon. But, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm going to pip the hell out of this thing. So, yeah, that's my final thoughts on it. Max Striker, definitely two thumbs up. Go get it. If you like the Nexus Pro, you'll like this. Um, if you're not a fan of shotgun grips, then you may not like this, but since there's Picatinny underneath the, uh, the grip itself, I mean, you're still fine. So, yeah. So, that's going to be it for this video. So, if you enjoy the content we put here, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Max Striker, if you've played around with it, or... Do you think you're just going to stick with the Nexus Pro? Again, let me know in the comments down below. I love reading them all. And, ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And also, don't forget, we do have a P.O. box if you ever want to drop us a line. So, you know, old school style. So, again, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.